I'm surprised no one has talked about this, but... <laughs> a woman with a shiny kimono walked rapidly, biting her nails with stress and fear. Her feet tapped against the exotic wood floor until she reached a sliding door. May I come in? She asked with fear. Please do. A female voice replied at the other side. It was a woman, older than the girl that had just entered. Pardon the intrusion, but Sir Doma has arrived once again, the girl announced as calm as possibly. We have reports from citizens that Harodono has been seen at Ashisika yesterday night. My daughter was here? The woman stood up and looked at the girl with hopeful eyes. Some have said that she was dining at the udon stand near the shrine. Then look for her! Find her! The woman assured the girl, pointing at her door. Leave at once! Hano-san, with all due respect, hano don't know is no longer here, the girl whispered, fearing for her life. Hano-sama was scared already. When anchor, she is way worse. hano don't left with a boy. Silence. Terrifyingly cold silence. A boy? Hano, Sanma asked coldly. You're telling me that my daughter, a, de- a dainty, is tra- a deity, is traveling with a pathetic, low life peasant? P- please spare my life, Hano, Sanma. I beg you, please. A hand harshly made contact against the girl's face. Take this servant away and dispose of her, Hano Osama ordered. And find my daughter, get info out of that nasty udon vendor, kill him if necessary. Right away, Hano Osama, soldiers entered the room and dragged the poor girl away. Please, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The girl kept begging, kicking, and screaming. Do not kill me. I don't want to die. Help. Hano-sama. A boy admired that scene and quickly stood beside Hano-sama. He knelt and looked at the floor, placing his katana aside. Mother, I am home. Ah, good. The mother hummed, walking out of the room, her son following her. I have gone a high rank at the samurai course, he spoke, walking next to Hano Osama. My social skills have been proved for I have been training. Tell me later, Tatsuwa, I am busy at the moment, she replied, not even sparing the boy a glance. Tatsuwa watched his mother walk towards the purpose leader of the happiness club. Good evening, Sir Doma. Hano Osama bowed respectfully, and so did Doma. No need to be so formal, Hano Osama. Doma smiled kindly. We are to be family after all. As soon as my daughter is back home safely, then we shall discuss the marriage in cold expiration terms. Hano Osama sighed, saying, My poor daughter, fighting on her own in a world full of evilish beasts. They are foolish creatures who, despitely weak, oh, seek something superior to cling on to. Doma shook his head once he saw Hano Doma, Hana Sama's a com- confused expression. He cleared his throat and smiled. I am quite thrilled to finally meet Hano Dona. It pains me that she was, has pushed me aside for years now. Both persons kept talking as they walked away from Tatsuwa. Once they were both out of sight, Tatsuwa punched the nearest wall, breaking most of it. How furious he was! Tatsuwa thought by getting his mother to hate that privileged and idiotic girl, she, his mother, would prefer him over Yin. He has the one who told his mother about Kayaka. Why isn't he being favored? Why did his mother still love Yin? Ah, right. 
Yin was the only child that actually mattered to his mother. That stupid is probably living a filthy barn with pigs or even a slave as a brothel. Fert not, Tatsuwa, Tatsuwa said, trying to calm his anger down. She cannot last a day out there with her divinity or not. She definitely wishing to run back home again. Time, well, changing eat to you. Your eyes let it open. Soft snores, skin, warmth, tranquility. It would have been an easy, cute, a very cute scene if both of you weren't <laughs> naked. I need breakfast, you thought. My clothes has been scattered, sadly. Uh, Yin, Tanjo hummed, slowly opening his eyes. He looked at you and kissed the tip of your nose. Good morning, my goddess. <laughs> Good morning. He smiled back. Tanjo got out of bed and got dressed. He then grabbed your clothes and knelt next to you. Do you need help? He asked, giving your clothes. Don't worry, I'm... Once you sat up, a lightly sharp pain was present below your stomach. Your legs were sore. You hissed due to pain. Yin, Tanjo panicked. I'm sorry, I knew I went too far. Tanjo, it's all right. The affirmation boy wrapped the blanket around your body, carefully picking you up and running off somewhere. Tanjo, put me down! You two arrived to the shower room. Luckily, there was a bathtub for you to rest inside of. The bathtub was soon filled with warm water, and Tanjo set you in the water gently as possible. I'll get chocolate, new clothes, and some breakfast, all right? Tanjo spoke rapidly, pointing the door. I will try not to take too long in case you need help when washing yourself or wanting a towel or anything of sorts. With that, Tanjo left in a hurry. You sighed heavily. It was too over-exaggerated. <laughs> Such a cute yet annoying trait of his. Ridiculous. Oh, recule. You scoffed. You soon blushed faintly and sank inside the bathtub. Nevertheless, it helps. Just as said, the brandy-haired male washed you. During that time, he considerably praised you and let out lovesick sighs as he kept telling you how much he loved you. He often peek at your skin while putting on your clothes, probably reminding how he got to savor you. <laughs> he let out a lengthy, loving sigh while adjusting your hoary. Everything all right? You asked. I'm really happy right now. He sighed again, hugging you with care. I love you the most, my wonderful goddess, the queen of my heart. The woman of my dreams. The most wonderful and gorgeous that I've ever lived. I love you. I caught that verse. <laughs> 17 times you said it. You giggled, kissing his forehead. I love you too. You two suddenly heard loud laughs and thuds, followed by some raspy voices. Someone woke up really erratic, huh? Tundra cook chuckled you shook your head uh, we should go have breakfast with them you hummed walking towards the door tanjo soon scooped you up again to which you once again protested i can walk do not worry too much you were in p such pain in this morning that it you scared me tanjo said worriedly i hate myself for the rest of my life if i ever harmed you uh, don't excruciate moshi you kissed the red-eyed boy on his forehead before setting yourself back on your feet and making your way outside the room. Shall we go now? Good morning, Tanjo beamed, sliding open the door. Good morning. You smiled and stood next to Inosuke's seat. Tanjo soon hoped you down. You smiled shyly at Tanjo. Thank you. No problem. He chuckled cutely, sitting next to you. Inosuke smelled you lightly before scratching his nose in disgust. You reek of tomorrow. Good. You kept eating. Baski Inosuke and I did 200 push-ups today. Kayaka beamed, eating his breakfast with joy. I lasted the most.
I ought to tell you, Inosuke crackled proudly before looking at you. See how amazing I am? Good, you hummed. Katsu Katsuyumaka, it didn't work, Inosuke whispered the small kid. Then presents, give her presents, Kayako whispered. Inosuke nodded and soon took out a flower with some petals already fallen, acorns, berries, and his clothes. Oh, great. Yeah, yay. He then threw the acorns and berries at your face. Have some presents. I got them for you, Inosuke said in a demanding tone before slamming the flower next to your food plate. Have a flower too, goddammit. It's green and favorite color and cute and smells uh, like you. Uh, this is rather charming, actually. You blinked a few times, taken aback and looking the flower. Thank you, Inosuke. Kaika and Nosuke smiled triumphantly at each other. Zenitsu silently watched you for a dog and eat, glaring at Tanjo with a hatred he never felt before. <laughs> Zenitsu, you called, holding his, ha holding his hand. He got out of his thoughts once he felt your hand touching his. It was just his hand. But it felt so forbidden, so intimate, intimate, Tanjiro. Zenitsu got up from his seat and left the dining room. But wait, Zenitsu! You tried to follow after him, but Tanjiro held your hand carefully. Let him be, Yin, Tanjiro muttered. With an unsure feeling, you sat down and kept eating. Zenitsu slammed the door angrily before tucking his hair with immense rage. He yelled, scratching the walls from time to time. His tears flowed like streams of agony, sadness, and against. He couldn't bear his feelings. It painted his very soul. He heard everything after all. How you two gave yourselves to each other? The sounds you made? The things you two said? Hell, he could even picture the faces you made. And you still had the crimson to wake up tranquil the next day and ask, oh, and ask as if nothing happened. Were his, Zenitsu's feelings that worthless to you? Were you also playing with him? Toying with him? Getting revenge for something that happened years ago? I, Zenitsu finally accredited words, sliding on the wall until he was sitting on the floor. I'm fucking tired. My best to get her to love me. I was so close, so close. But she had to ruin it. She's so earnest to feel love in both ways, huh? That makes her nothing but a harlot. His head soon par parked out, shaking his head with great denial. No, 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 no. Yin-chan isn't at fault. She could never be at fault. Sanitsu sighed lovingly as he caresses the wisteria necklace he carried. She's so beautiful and nice. She is always there to aid anyone. She's just so perfection. Everyone perfect can't ever be wrong. Then, whose fault could it be? His mind soon clicked. The answer being as clear as daylight. Sanitsu grit his teeth, growled lightly. Tanjiro. That's right, it's him! The one at fault is Tanjiro! Zenitsu stood up and pranced around the new tor now torn room. He thinks he's so superior because of his fakely good to goody to act. He even dared to defile Yin Chen's godlike body with his filthy peasant being. Zenitsu looked at the necklace again, nestling against the object. You know, Yin Chen, we're both the same, he cooed. I was manipulated by people I thought loved me, and so are you. Can't you see that Tanjo only desires yourself and your wealth? And the, as a blonde shook his head with a low chuckle, the admiration didn't seem to change. It felt so heavy, difficult to breathe. Zenitsu was shining and sweet, shy eyes turned into craze. Desiring ones. But I'm not like him. Oh, no, no, no. I'm nothing like him. Zenitsu giggled before sighing deeply in love. I want your everything. Your voice. Your smile. Your laugh. Yourself. Your dreams. Your thoughts. Ah, I want all of it. 
Ah, even those gorgeous eyes of yours. I want them for myself. Sunitsu's words halted as he heard footsteps approaching. Guessing by the rhythm and weight, it was you, his beloved one. He quickly ordered the room as much as possible, no trace of anger being seen. You knocked on the door slightly. I need to make I pass. Since there was no response, you slid the door open. Oh, pardon the intrusion. There he was, Zenitsu, lying on the floor and holding something behind his chest. Are you all right? You asked tenderly, kneeling next to him. You looked at his hands, which were holding the Osteria necklace with such care. You still have it? I'm muchly attached to it. Sanitsu chuckled sadly before looking at you. You know why, right? Of course I do. You sighed, holding the place where you used to have your necklace. Why did you choose him? Pardon me? You tilted to closer to Zenitsu, but he groggily sat up and looked at you with sad, glassy eyes. His expression has been one of sadness, but this time it was more heartbreaking than ever. Why did you choose Tanjiro? Zenitsu winced and against and then met his disparate gaze with, with yours. I never stopped thinking about you. After all this time, I, I loved you. I didn't know that until I lost you. I loved you once. You sighed, your head directed somewhere else to look at nothing in particular. You were my first love after all. My forbidden fairy tale like love. Do you think I still have a chance? Sunitsu asked, giving himself false hope. No, not really. I'm sorry. You rested your hands on top of his. Tanju and I really love each other, and as much as I love you, I moved on. You should do the same too, so you won't get hurt anymore. When you hold to the past for so long, you cannot enjoy everything else that there is in life waiting for you. I don't care about what's out there. I only want you, Zenitsu pleaded sadly. It's meaningless to live without a purpose. You're my purpose. I don't need anything else but you. You tugged at your hands, to which Zenitsu let go. We have to make space in our lives for new things to arrive. You said with a small wince, I don't want to let you go. I don't want to. Zenitsu teared, his voice breaking quite often. I love you, Yen. I love you so much that it hurts. You hummed reassuring, hugging the sobbing, honey-eyed male. He hugged back quietly, tightly, still crying. You are a gentle and honest boy, Zenitsu. You spoke. I'm sure that you are capable of a wonderful woman with your vir virtuals. But they won't be you, Zenitsu said through sniffs and depressing sighs. Zenitsu, you hissed, looking away. If I only truly giving up on you. Zenitsu softly slid his hands to the sides of your face, then shivers. Your gaze locked with his. Zenitsu's eyes were drunken with both love, desire, and sadness. Ah, the strongest and most influence of all emotions. You saw his eyes flicker between your eyes and your lips, making you unease. The tension grew higher when Zenitsu lightly tilted his head to the side and slowly thinned out the space between you two. Will you grant me, my dear Yen? Zenitsu said with deep whispers. One last kiss. Oh, if only you knew that not only your lips sealed that morning, but your fatal, unbiteable destiny. By the way, I want to give a hint. You can tell when yandere actions are happening when my voice goes lower. I know some people have been having hard times with that, but if you guys want to know when yandere stuff is happening, just listen to my voice.